My guest today is Jeff Ryan, the author of Super Mario, How Nintendo Conquered America, uh, which is a great read. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Andrew. Um, all about Mario, the, well, probably one of the most uh, popular characters in the world who started life sort of humbly as Jumpman. Yeah, he was originally Jumpman in the original Donkey Kong video game. He didn't have a name at first, but as the game came to America, the six people that were at Nintendo of America needed to come up with a name. They didn't like Jumpman, and at the time, they were uh, renting a little warehouse, and they were back in their rent, and the landlord came, and he had a mustache, and he yelled at them, <laughs> and after he left, one of them said, Mario, because his name right, was right, Mario, right. and you know, if only he had shaved, then uh, we would have had a different name for Super Mario. And it's, it's a name that works in English and Japanese, right? Yes, it sounds Japanese, Mario, Mariko. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And so, it, what was interesting is that Mario, the original one that was in the uh, Donkey Kong games, Donkey Kong was a, was came out of a failed video game console that then they retooled. Yeah, Donkey Kong, the game, was originally called Radar Scope, and it was a Space Invaders knockoff. And they made 3,000 of them, shipped them to America, and only sold 1,000. And there were two choices. Either you could just essentially throw the 2,000 into the river, or you could try to sell it forever and ever and ever, and e neither one of those looked good. So they decided on a third option, which was to make a new, just a new motherboard and put it inside the existing consoles and paint them a different color and sell them as a new game. And all of their other designers were busy making the games that they were scheduled to make, so they got this staff artist who was essentially one of the people painting the cabinets, <laughs> and they told him, okay, make a game. We don't really care exactly what it is because something's better than nothing. And that guy was named Shigeru Miyamoto. He's who the Steven became Spielberg one of the, yeah, of, the geniuses of video, games. Of, of video games, went on to do all these Super Mario games, and all, I've been involved in games all the way up through, through the Zeldas and all these fantastic titles. Right, if you would think of a good Nintendo game, it's probably Shigeru Miyamoto's video game. And if you think of a good other game, Shigeru Miyamoto probably is the inspiration behind it ultimately. Now, he has been uh, loyal. He stayed with Nintendo as somebody with his level of success that is selling literally tens of billions of these games worldwide over these many years. In America, that person almost undoubtedly would have gone off and started their own company. But he stayed with Nintendo. Yeah, he stayed with Nintendo. And I'm not even sure if he's compensated that well. I mean, I'm sure he's doing, you know, better than me, <laughs> better than most people, but he's not, he's not making the Spielberg Lucas money right. that you would think someone in America would be able to do. It's a, it's a different culture. He's very loyal to Nintendo, and as he said, he's not staying at Nintendo for the money they pay him. He's staying for the money that they give him to develop with. To play with, right. Yes. And he made his boss, his boss at one time topped Forbes' uh, list of the richest Japanese, so his boss is a billionaire many times over yes. because of him. Yes, Hiroshi Yamauchi, who uh, was the he was a grandson of the original founder of Nintendo, which was a family company. And it, it was right up until a couple of years ago. And uh, Yamu You describe it quite a lot of that, that drama in the book. So his son-in-law is re recruited and ends up running uh, Nintendo of America, making it quite a great success. But mm -hmm. yet his, his father-in-law basically fires him. Yeah, there's, there's really only one way to become a billionaire in this world, and it's basically to, you know, not ever be happy with anything. <laughs> and and uh, Arakawa, the man who was running Nintendo of America, his fatal flaw, it seemed, that was that he was quite happy with things. And he was content, and he was making more and more money, but he didn't have that, you know, that fire in his belly. Right. So uh, it, it wasn't what Yamauchi wanted in a, a son-in-law slash president. Right. So now we only have a couple minutes left here, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, Nintendo now. And Nintendo obviously had great success with the Game Boy and the NES and the N64 and then really sort of disappeared for almost a generation. With, they had the GameCube, I guess. And then um, the Wii came and the Wii was sort of a sleeper hit that sort of illustrates one of the design philosophies that you talk about in the book. Yeah, uh, Nintendo's big thing is using what they call seasoned technology, which is another way of saying not top shelf parts. Right. So when the week seasoned technology, very Japanese. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you could also describe it as withered technology, mature. depending on mature. <laughs> So they were selling the Wii for $250, and it cost them much less than $250 to make it, so they were making a profit on day one. The comparators, uh, Xbox 360 from Microsoft and the PlayStation 3 from Sony, they cost more, and they cost a lot more to make. Right. So Microsoft and Sony were both in the hole for a couple of years before they made their monies back. Nintendo was making money from day one. And it, it turned out to be quite uh, successful, and there's a, there's a new version of this console that they've unveiled 
um, the, the Wii U. The Wii U. It's going to be in stores next year. Its big thing is that it has a tablet, a touchscreen tablet, as a controller instead of just a regular little Wii controller. So if you're playing a game with me, you're looking up on the screen and you can see your game going on. I'm playing against you. I have my own screen down here. I can't see you and you can't see me. Oh, because so my we have secretive screens. Madden football players are going to be much more secretive. Yes, although I guess I can look up on the screen and see you. It's just that you can't see me, so it's, it's like a one-way sharing thing. Thank one you again, sharing. Jeff. The, the book is Super Mario.